Good morning, everybody. It's a nice crisp morning, about 18 degrees Fahrenheit, nice layer of frost and everything. And I just love mornings like this. It feels great. We're gonna try to do a fuel economy test and a cold weather start on this generator. Now I've never tested the fuel economy on it, but it's supposed to be pretty good. So we're gonna find out together. Here we go. Hi everyone, I'm David, and I'm on a mission to take my house and garage off grid. I just added diesel fuel. Uh, this is uh, straight out of the pump. So this is actually got the road tax on it. I really should be buying some off-road diesel. I just filled it to the point where the fuel is touching the strainer. Now there's a strainer in here, and this strainer is actually part of the fill tube. So it doesn't go into the tank. The tank starts a little bit lower, and so we can just barely see the diesel fuel, and I'm gonna show you real close what that looks like. So this is the strainer on the back of the generator. If we look inside, you can see it's full of diesel. You can see the diesel fuel is just making contact with the bottom of the strainer. So what generator is this? This is an MEP-831A. It's a military generator, three kilowatt continuous rating, uh, but that is military rating. So that is very conservative compared to what a civilian rated generator would be. And this is a very early version of an inverter generator. So we have a permanent magnet alternator, a PMA, attached directly to the uh, air-cooled single cylinder Yanmar diesel engine. That three phase goes into an onboard inverter, which uh, converts it uh, to DC and then directly back into AC. We get 120, 240 volt uh, pure sine wave out of this. Now I like this generator because it's so efficient and you actually have the option to manually start it just in case the batteries go dead but they are glitchy. So a lot of people uh, dislike them for that. There's some uh, l little nuances here. There's a lot of wiring and safeties built in to, for oil pressure and fuel and everything else. And so if just one thing sends a signal, it'll shut down to protect itself. I'm gonna let this run for about five minutes after we do a cold start. Uh, so that will skew the results just slightly, but it'll be a very small percentage in the grand scheme of it because I'm gonna let this run for several hours before we come back and add more diesel fuel. We're gonna measure how much diesel fuel we add at the end of this run uh, so that we can get the fuel economy. I put the generator up on some pallets along with some extra little pieces of wood here and there uh, to make it level. Hopefully the results will be the same before and after uh, because we're, I'm not gonna move the generator. It's gonna stay right here in this position. So let me go inside and I'll show you the charge verter. This EG4 charge verter is going through the uh, positive and negative cables into my EG4 battery bank, and it's running through this Victron shunt. So the Victron shunt is gonna measure all the power flow, and that shunt is connected through Bluetooth to the app. And now this is the app, and there's currently no uh, power flow through it. So we reset the history and we're gonna be able to measure how much energy we charge uh, right here on the app. Ooh. <laughs> so that's, uh, it's very cold. <laughs> All right, so this is the charge verter. Now the charge verter is adjustable. So with the DC breaker off, I'm going to adjust this and go down to current. And you see where it says 100 amps right now? That would overload this generator. So we're going to adjust that down to 50 amps. 50 amps, enter. So that setting of 50 amps, that is out to the battery bank and it's gonna be charging at about 54 volts most of the time. I have it set to 57 volts as the high cutoff. And so that's what we're gonna do for this generator. Okay, so now that we warmed up a little bit, we're gonna turn on the circuit breaker. And we can see that came up. 
So it's 9.25 in the morning. So we're reading what's going into the battery right now. And you see we're at uh, 2,592 watts, 48.88 amps. Even though the charge verter down there is set to 50 amps, there's just a little difference between them. And we're at 53 volts right now. This will come up fairly quick to 54 volts. And we'll be a little over 2,600 watts. Uh, probably for most of the time and We can look at the history and Hey already we've charged it by 0.1 kilowatt hours or 100 watt hours So we'll come back in a few hours and see how we're doing It's the end of the day and the generator has been running all day long and it's time to find out what our fuel economy is It's 4 30 p.m. Which means that this has been running just over six hours now the first cool thing to note is that it's been running under full load, almost 2,900 watts at the generator, 2,600 watts into the battery without me adding any fuel. A lot of civilian generators, if you run them at full load, they might only last you three or four hours for the fuel tank that's on board. So that's one of the reasons that I like the military uh, generators. They, they have a larger fuel tank for the load that is in there. You can always run them for a full shift. All right, so let's find out what we're doing here. We're gonna first look at the app on the cell phone. The app is connected with Bluetooth to the Victron shunt, and we'll see what we're doing now. And then we're gonna shut off the charge verter and let everything idle for five minutes before shutting off the generator. So here's the app. And as you can see, we're doing a little bit under uh, 2,600 watts. And let's find out in the last six hours, we have charged 18.6 kilowatt hours. Nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait for this to flip over to 18.7 so we get a more accurate number, hopefully, and then we'll switch off the charge verter. And what I'd like to do is I'm gonna switch off the DC side, but I'm gonna leave it connected with the AC to the generator uh, and give everything five minutes to cool off. And we're at 18.7. So I'm gonna switch this off. All right, we let it cool off a bit. And over here, we'll shut that off. Excellent. So I'm gonna use this jug for measuring the diesel fuel because it has a nice spout for pouring into the generator tank. And I have a LED light behind it simply so that we can see the marks nice and easily. So four quarts is one gallon, which is what I've measured to in the past. We're going to one and a half gallons now at six quarts. And let's go pour it in. It will probably take all of this. So we're not up to the bottom of that strainer yet. So we'll keep going until we are. So another six quarts, which means this is a total of three gallons. So if I pull this out, you see the diesel fuel is right there. And when we drop this in, it will it covers the very bottom. There you go. Can you see that in the bottom there? So we are there. All right, let's come in close and take a look at how much we have remaining. And down here, that is two quarts, that's three. We're a little bit higher than the halfway mark, so let's call this 2.6 quarts remaining in the container. So we started off with 12 quarts total, minus 2.6, so we consumed 9.4 quarts, or 2.35 gallons. We added 18.7 kilowatt hours into the battery. Uh, so that gives us 7.96 kilowatt hours per gallon. So this is a more efficient generator than running my Honda uh, gasoline generator. I tested my uh, Honda inverter generator. That's the EU 6500, I believe. And so we ran that one at a bunch of different ratings in a previous video. If you want to check that out, I can leave a link for it in the description. 
the very best number that we got out of that was 5.9 kilowatt hours per gallon. So we got eight on this one and 5.9 on the Honda. Another data point we can compare is the generator that I made in a previous video. So I made an alternator generator using a Harbor Freight engine uh, belt driven to a car alternator. And in that one, the best we could do was 4.8 kilowatt hours per gallon. Uh, so the Honda is certainly better than that one, uh, but the uh, military one is better than both. So how do we compare? Well, the military generator is about 35% more efficient than the Honda generator when running through the charge verter to charge a battery. Uh, the military one was less expensive. Uh, I think I paid $1,000 for that one at auction and then I did fix it up. So I had to put some time into replacing the rubber hoses uh, and things. Uh, not really a lot of money into fixing it, but uh, certainly some time. The Honda one just worked right out of the box, but I think that Honda generator retails for $5,000. So if you can find the Honda one uh, for sale at a yard sale or on Marketplace or something like that, uh, that's probably a good deal overall. Uh, but the military one is 35% more efficient. So that's our final number. Um, oh, and we comparing the numbers to the alternator generator that I made. Well, the alternator generator was $400 total, all in, uh, but certainly a ton of time. That one took the most time out of anything. Uh, so the least expensive uh, and the least performance, but fun to do. <laughs> so hopefully that gives you a, a good comparison of some different options out there. Diesel generators are certainly more efficient uh, the military one, it produces more power right at the generator, but remember we have to take into account the losses to charge a battery. So in this case, I'm using the yellow charge verter, which I will leave an affiliate link for that in the description below. If you'd like to help support this channel using the affiliate links when you purchase something, uh, really does help out the channel a lot and allows me to keep doing these videos. Thank you everybody so much for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.